Hey y'all. If you've read anything that I've written about life purpose or watched any of my videos, you know that I don't think life purpose is something that you find and you stick with. Like it's a it's a clear answer that you just need to figure out what that answer is. I think that life purpose is a path and that if you stay in touch with what brings you joy, then new things are going to become your purpose all the time. And to share with you that I actually walk my talk, I um, have started my business as an artist. And this has been incredibly terrifying because I've been in the personal development industry since I was 18 years old. And so that's, uh, I just turned 30, so that's 12 years. And um, I just wanted to share with you, since I'm getting to kind of start over and maybe go through some of the things that many of you are going through, um, facing a lot of my fears and figuring out how to fit it in, fit this new passion into my life without sacrificing myself financially and my well-being and how to manage it all. And, and in addition to that, dealing with all the inner conflicts um, of doing something new and doing something new that I care about. Um, so I just wanted to share some of the takeaways that I've noticed for myself of what is having this be successful. Um, the first is that I have I have a lot of mentors. I have a lot of mentors. I have um, two business coaches. I have two people that I work with um, that are more consulting for my, my practice. So there are people who do similar work to me, but have been doing it for like three times as long. Um, I have uh, a spiritual teacher. I have a yoga and meditation teacher. I have a, a music teacher who is also a spiritual teacher. So I have a lot of people advocating for me, a lot of support. And uh, just to be clear, I'm paying only three of those people. The other people are people that I have got, I just, be, I just created those relationships. And I created those relationships by asking them to mentor me. So this is something that is super easy to do and oftentimes um, can make or break the success of, of whatever endeavor you're going after. Um, finding mentors is such an incredible experience. It's like, it's like having a parent that is specifically raising a certain aspect of you, that is specifically nurturing and caring for and protecting and um, educating as one particular aspect of you. So I highly recommend that you find yourself some mentors. And finding mentors is very easy. You just look for people, preferably people that you already know personally, um, and ask them to mentor you and check in with them about whether they want compensation or how, you know, how they would like to structure it um, to be respectful of their time. Some tips for finding mentors would also be uh, brevi brevity is a sign of respect. So keeping things concise and to the point so you're not rambling on and wasting people's time. Um, and most importantly, when you do start to work with a mentor, actually use what, what you're learning from them. So if you see somebody and you talk to, you have a conversation with them, whether they've agreed to mentor you or not, if they say something to you that impacts you, that makes a difference in your life, then go and, and live that. Use that nugget and then come back to them and share with them. Give them credit for it. So this might look like that thing that you said about um, you know, getting up and moving first thing in the morning. Well, I started to do that and I noticed that my energy skyrocketed and I feel so awesome. and. I would love to work with you more. I mean, I feel like you have a lot to offer me. And I, is there a way that would be good for you to work with me in that capacity? And that is so inspiring as somebody who has information that wants to share it, 
um, it's compelling and, and um, that's a great way to get a mentor. So that's the first, mentoring. Um, the second is you have to do things. You have to actually take action. You cannot think your way through a new way of living, a new, um, a new practice. You actually have to do things. So this is the this is the most terrifying p part of it because because this is a necessary component, you are going to do things before you're good at them. I just went through this process with finding a live painting gig and finding an avenue for showing my work. And my God, the first conversate round of conversations was horrible. And it was particularly horrible because it's one thing at 18 when you're trying something for the first time and you're kind of awkward and terrible at everything, but when you have an identity about being a confident person and being an authority and knowing what you're talking about, knowing what you're doing, it becomes a lot harder to be vulnerable. But these first conversations, man, I was like, um, I'm an artist and I don't really know who I'm who I'm supposed to be talking to, but maybe if you can get me in touch with the right person, or I, I think this could be a really good fit. I mean, it was, it was painful. But after having a few of those conversations, I learned who the person was, I learned what questions to ask, I learned how to filter through the person who answers the phone into a decision-making person. Um, and I learned it really quick. It took me about a week to um, have my conversation down pat, and now I'm actually in the negotiation process with two different venues. Um, but yeah, that's terrifying to start something knowing that you're going to be bad at it. But if you were learning a new sport, you know that you would be bad at it when you first started. You don't become good at something until you practice and train. So that's the other piece is instead of looking at that as an indicator that you're on the wrong path or that um, you're going to fail, know that that's just part of the process. Actually plan it in. Schedule it in. If you, like for me, um, I, I kind of, I, I underestimated how long it would take me to get through the full process of all of this and I did end up hiring a coach specific for, um, for this business. But, but for me, I, I looked at, you know, where, when, what is my goal? My goal was, um, to sell my first piece sometime this summer, which hasn't happened yet, but it will. Um, so I don't go into it like, like expecting that that first week I'm going to sell a painting and, and, and start cold calling everybody who might be interested in buying a painting from me. I planned in that training period. I planned in like, okay, so how am I going to get myself ready to have these conversations when going from, I've never identified myself as a, an artist before. So none of my friends or family know that I'm trying to do this. So I, it's like a major identity break. So I have to train myself to talk about my art. I have to train myself to talk about pricing. I have to train myself to get, uh, have these conversations to get exhibits. I mean, there's a whole, the entire, everything about this business I am new at. So I, I, um, I scheduled in a month and a half of training so that I could go through all of those processes and learn. And of course, I still you know, I'm a, I'm a beginner, I'm still a novice, but at least at this point, I have context, I have a place to grow from. So, that's my takeaways from my own little endeavor that I'm launching, and you can see my artwork, yay, behind me. This is my piece that I'm working on right now. Anyways. So I hope that was helpful for you and inspires you to go after your own passions and have fun doing it. Thanks for watching.